Here is a trig identity. No, it's not a trig identity. It's a trig equation. Um, basically, this is not an identity because there's a there's only uh, this isn't true for all x. Not an identity. Not true for all x. Just true for some x's, and we're going to try to find out what x's those are. So don't don't panic. It looks really deceptively simple. It's not a crazy. Just follow the steps that work. So the first thing I'm going to do is set everything equal to zero. Sine x minus tangent x equals zero. Not set everything equal to zero. Set the one side equal to zero by moving tangent x. And the second step I do is I take a look at the two terms and I say to myself, can I factor anything out of there? And the answer is no. The other thing is, is it's not quadratic. So I need to write these in the same trig formula or trig function as I possibly can. Well, the only thing I can think of to do is to rewrite tangent as sine over cosine. Because I know that identity is true. I can replace that in there. But now notice that sine is a factor of both of those. So I can factor out sine of x. And I'm left with 1 minus 1 over cosine of x. Now, if you don't believe that, just multiply it back. Sine times 1 is sine x. Sine x times minus 1 over cosine x is sine x over cosine x. Just take the time and do that. All right, now I have a product of two things equal to 0. Now you're probably wondering why I'm not writing 1 over cosine as secant. Well, I understand the cosine function much more than I understand the secant function. Well, I understand all of them, but I know students, this is something more common for them. So why not work with cosine if you can? So now I had to think about sine of x equals 0. Let me look at my unit circle. 0 is standard. It's a number that shows up on the points on the edge of the unit circle. And the, the, in the first rotation, the place where sine x equals 0 is here at 0 radians and pi radians. So x equals 0 radians and x equals pi radians. Now I'm going to continue solving this. Uh, 1 over cosine x equals 1. Then 1 equals cosine x after multiplying both sides by cosine x. So I'm going to multiply this by cosine x and this by cosine x. And that's what I get. Now I have to think about on this rotation, where does cosine x equal 1? Well, the only place that cosine x equals 1 is right here, where x equals 0. Well, you see that I have x equals 0 over here, so I don't have to worry about saying it twice. Now, all I've done, though, I haven't found all values of x. I found some values of x. All right, so I need to find all of them. Well, in order to get all around to all the other infinite values that land right there when you rotate the terminal side around the unit circle, is I just have to add 2 pi to it. So one solution is equal to 0 plus 2 pi, and then I'm going to multiply by k, where k is an integer. And what that does is it takes care of rotating both in the counterclockwise way and in the clockwise way. Sorry, I keep writing off the page here. And then I do the same thing with the second guy, pi plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. So that means when I'm here at pi, to get to the next uh, solution to the equation, I just keep rotating 2 pi, and it brings me right back to where I was. Now students often say, is writing k as an integer necessary? Yes, because k, what is it? You need to tell the reader what it is. So is it an integer? Is it a real number? Is it a whole number? Is it a natural number? This is why it's important to know your sets. The integers includes the counting numbers, positive and negative, plus 0. So the negative k rotates it clockwise. The positive k rotates it counterclockwise. Hopefully this will help.